All right, guys, sourdough, normally a lot of work, very difficult. You have to stay chained to your kitchen for 48 hours straight, maintaining the sourdough in order to make a reasonable loaf of bread. That is not the case. I'm going to show you guys how I figured out how to do like a simple, minimal time investment sourdough that like any normal working person can do. So let's get started before I change my mind about standing in front of a camera all day. Before we get started, guys, my countertop's a little messy. I try to clean it once a week. If any of you skinny twinks want to come over in a maid outfit or girls, by all means, save me some time and a headache of cleaning myself. So we have our glass bowl zeroed out on the scale. We're going to put in 10 grams of salt. Apparently I have to retrain my workers on how to apply a label without wrinkling it. 10 grams of salt, zero out the scale again. 280 grams of glass bottled mineral water. 280, we'll zero out the scale again. Now we need 500 grams of flour. You want an organic bread flour preferably. We have one on my Amazon shop and we also have flours available on frankeastrangefoods.com. But this ratio of water to flour is very important because if it's too hydrated, it will not form properly. So here I have my sourdough starter. I left it outside in the higher temperature to make sure it was really active. We just fed the starter yesterday. So you need to feed your sourdough starter one day at least before making the bread so it's nice and active and healthy. You can get your sourdough starter base culture on frankiesfreerangefoods.com. The uh, top dried out so we got a bit of a hard crust. We don't really want to put that in the bread because it will, uh, it will stay hard and crusty in the bread and you might have chunks in the bread. So just be careful about that. But you can see underneath that crust, we have a beautiful bubbly sourdough starter. So we're gonna zero out the scale again and put about 70 grams of starter in here. The volume depends on how liquidy your starter is. You know, like this is a little liquidy, so you wanna do like 70, 80 grams if it's even more liquidy you got to add more if it's kind of solid you can add less so I make sourdough bread every three days so this is gonna sit on the counter and then two days from now I'm gonna feed it again we have a whole video on sourdough starters if you guys want to check that out so that's all the ingredients we're just gonna mix everything together I like using my hands and a silicone scraper on the sides of the bowl I like wearing gloves so that I don't have to clean dough off my hands for several minutes. And you really want this to be as dry as possible. Yeah, even if you just add a little too much water, like 280 or 290 grams, uh, especially with the higher humidity this time of year in some parts of the U.S., it can really make the dough uh, kind of wet and, and it won't rise nearly as well when you go to bake it. So we have our dough ball formed together, nothing crazy maybe 30 seconds of mixing. Now this is gonna sit for 15 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on your schedule, you know. You could go have lunch, you don't have to be crazy. Just let this sit for at least about 15 minutes. Has it been 20 minutes, perhaps 30 minutes, even 40 minutes? We will never know, but it is time to stretch our dough out. So the water and flour have hydrated together. So now we are going to just pull our dough about 10 times and you'll notice at first it was pretty easy to do but as you continue to do it it'll be very difficult to pull the dough apart to the point where you might not even be able to see it's already built up that elasticity after just a few folds now i can't even pull it apart all right can't really pull the dough apart anymore so we're just gonna put it back in the bowl if you have a lid that's great if not you want to put something on this because we don't want any humidity getting into this dough and now we'll put a towel on top so here outside in this sunroom I have my dehydrator this is set to 105 degrees and I'm going to put it on seven hours. So whether you come get this in 10 hours, seven hours or 12 hours, 
it would only have fermented for about a seven hour period of time. The time and temperature here is the most finicky thing. If you don't have a dehydrator, you're gonna need to use a heating pad. If it's any less than like 85, 90 degrees outside because this needs to be very warm for a pretty long period of time to ferment properly. So later tonight, we're gonna come back and we're gonna get this ready for tomorrow. All right, guys, it's been about seven hours. So the dough has risen a significant amount. Now, if you happen to forget about this outside, that's the reason we set it for seven hours. Worst case scenario, you can still cook the bread in the morning. It's just not gonna look as nice because we're gonna shape it right now. So here we have a wooden bread basket. I think these are called bannetons. And we're just gonna take a metal sieve or any sieve with some flour and dust the inside. If you put a light amount, it will probably stick. All right, so we have our dough, maybe half risen, very sticky. We're gonna take our silicone scraper and really just make sure to scrape flush against the sides. I've done this before with, uh, you know, putting some oil around the outside of the dough. It honestly, it's not really that big of a deal, you know, cause these never stick that badly. So once we have it mostly scraped off the sides of the bowl, we're gonna turn it into the banneton. You wanna be kind of gentle cause you know, we don't wanna remove all the air bubbles. So that's all the prep done. This is going to sit overnight until we wake up tomorrow and then we will preheat our oven. Uh, actually here, something I don't normally do, but what you should do is you should dampen the cloth that you put on top because the top will dry out. Watch as I pour 50 cents worth of water onto a cotton rag. Damp cloth on top. So it's the next morning. It's been about 10 hours and our bread has kind of risen and then deflated a little bit. It is a little warm outside, but it should be fine. You will need a Dutch oven for this. Probably one of the main factors in the bread turning out good because it needs to be really, really hot inside of this, which you can't get in a regular oven. So we got our Dutch oven inside and we're gonna put this on basically the highest temperature, which is gonna be 500. This needs to preheat for 45 minutes. This is just a piece of parchment paper that I traced. So you can put this at the bottom of the Dutch oven to make sure it doesn't stick. Usually it doesn't, but just to be safe. All right, it's been about 45 minutes. So when you take off the lid, even though it's dry heat, there should be some steam coming out. All right, so since we have that flour in here, we can just kind of gently pry this out and put it on top of the parchment paper. Now, if you forgot about it and left it in that glass bowl, you know, you'd have a harder time taking it out and, and it wouldn't be as pretty. So I'm just going to take a sharp knife and make a slit down the middle. This is so that the bread just doesn't split everywhere when it starts rising. Now we plop this into the middle of our Dutch oven. The lid goes back on. Open the oven. Back in. And then this should be like on 450 now. So I'll just lower the heat a little bit. And we're gonna check on this in 25 minutes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been about 25 minutes. So we're going to take the lid off the bread. Looks like it's been rising nicely. We're gonna pour a little water in the oven. You guys can see the steam if I don't burn my face. So that steam is gonna help the bread rise even more. And I did see that the bread's a little brown on top. So we're gonna stay around 425 degrees. So 20 more minutes and the nightmare should be over. Uh, I have these towels on the floor because this oven is not watertight. So when I pour water in here, sometimes it leaks out. So just keep that in mind. All right, I got stuck on a phone call, almost forgot. So hopefully we didn't overcook our bread a little bit. 
maybe a little crispy, but looks perfect. Well, that's the first time I've dropped it on the floor, but I guess you guys get a better look at it. The, the bottom is a bit dark, so, you know, we should have kept the temperature a little lower, but definitely good. Really, really good. Perfect crust on top. That's not that big of a deal on the bottom, but now we just let it rest and uh, have it for lunch. You know, so for minimal time invested, turned out really good. But, you know, if you get the temperature and timing a little better, usually get a larger loaf, a little more aeration. All right, our sourdough has been lonely by himself for a few hours on the counter, just cooling off. You could eat this right out of the oven. It's not really that big of a deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice the whole loaf. We're going to have some of it for lunch today, and we're going to put the rest in the freezer so it stays fresh for the next two days we have it. You know, it's never really that easy to cut, but it's a lot easier the first day. Yeah, so see, even with the minimal amount of effort, we got a decent crumb. You know, nothing crazy, but decent. All right, so we got four slices here. We're just going to wrap it up in a towel and put it in the freezer. Well, for uh, minimal time invested, let's give it a shot. Not the best loaf of bread I've made, but very good. Yeah, so for the amount of time we put into this bread, it turned out incredibly well. You know, less than five minutes of total prep. And the only annoying part is, you know, that next morning you kind of have to be home for two hours to preheat the oven and cook it. But very, very little work compared to all the other sourdough recipes. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. You can get a sourdough starter on frankiesfreerangefoods.com. And as I said earlier, we have the video explaining how to maintain that starter so you can do this. Uh, whenever you want. As always, if you guys can drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. My brain's fried today. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And if you guys want to support me further, frank to see all of my interesting businesses. I'll see you guys soon.